Hey everybody, Bill here. This week's vlog is all about social proof. We call it proof-based marketing. If the world says it's so, it must be so. If we as business owners or professionals say it's so, it's likely met with great skepticism. You see, you just can't edify yourself. So I have developed my top 10 best ways for you to establish trust, use social proof, and proof-based marketing to get your message across even better. Here we go. Number one, reviews and testimonials. This is special here at Reputation Sensei. Obviously, this is the foundation for which everything we do here is built. And that's because we believe that if the world says it's so, it must be so. And 93% of consumers take into consideration reviews and testimonials before they take action or make a purchase. So obviously, number one for me, reviews and testimonials. Leveraging the voice of your customers, clients, or patients because your business is not what you say it is, but rather what your clients, customers, and patients say that it is. Number two, data. We live in a day and age where data is king. We want data everywhere. We have data in our sports. We have data in our investments. We have data in our dating. We have data everywhere. So you should have data all over your site, page, or post as well. What's the mission critical data? What data is necessary to know in order for people to feel good about moving forward? That's social proof as well. It also establishes transparency. This is how many people we serve. This is the success that they generate. This is their overall satisfaction. This is what they said in surveys. Put that data uh, out front. Make sure you're leading in a trans in a transparent manner, and, and you'll find a lot of success in that regard. Uh, number three, what awards have you received or what accreditations do you have? Awards from local chambers or professional organizations or news outlets or the technology that you employ. For us, it's HubSpot, it's Google certified, it's Facebook certified. Anything we can do to establish our credibility, that's going to go a long way for people to feel good about moving forward. Plus, it lets them know, hey, I'm working with someone who's an expert. I'm working with someone who's done the work, who's done it for a long time, and who's most importantly done the work for people for which it's been successful. I'm not the first one this person has worked with. If your website could beg the question, hey, am I the first customer this, this person has ever had? Am I the first patient this doctor has ever seen? Am I the first client this professional has ever served? If that's the case, or if that could even be possibly the case based on your content, we have an issue and we can address it. So uh, number three, make sure you have awards and credibility on your website. Number four uh, capitalizes on something called FOMO or fear of missing out. And that's real-time notifications. We've been on sites before where you see a counter of how many people served or uh, there'll be a pop-up of, you know, uh, Billy, another satisfied customer or another McDonald's started this right in their sign, right? How many billions of people they served, giving them that real-time notification on a website or social platform uh, is really important. And you'll see a lot of this in Amazon where they actually have a, a rolling account of people's comments and the, the total count of, of customers served or the time uh, left before this limited time offer expires. Uh, those real-time notifications uh, can provide a lot of social proof as well, letting people know that people are currently engaged with your brand. Uh, number five, uh, trophy customers. You see this a lot on websites for people who are serving large corporate brands, the Coca-Colas, the NBCs. Uh, I've appeared on CNN. Uh, I've served, um, you know, uh, UPS or Amazon. Uh, we've served large uh, national brands. Uh, we've served large local brands. These are called trophy customers. These are the logos of the greatest clients, the clients you're the most proud of. Uh, we want to put those on our content, on our social media, uh, and, uh, and on our website as well. Those are called trophy customers. Uh, and if you, you want to have it in your, in your sites to achieve those trophy customers and, and have somewhat of a dream 100 or, or a top 10 list of your own of people that you want to target. Uh, because when you land one of those customers, they can tech, they can ultimately lead to a lot more customers, clients, or patients. So trophy customers are huge. Case studies. These are data-driven, long-form uh, 
uh, studies where you actually go in depth with a client, where they were before you met, what the experience was like while you were working together. Most importantly, what happened as a result of your working together? How many more customers, clients, or patients did they have? How much more revenue did they did they develop? Uh, how successful was it? How did they feel? These in-depth case studies can be delivered through email. They can appear on your case study portion of your website. Uh, you can talk about them on podcasts, but ultimately those case studies are super, super helpful. Uh, User-generated content. Uh, this is uh, number seven. This is actually really cool. Uh, you see a lot of uh, hashtag contests going on where people actually not prompted to speak highly of a product or service, but because of an incentive to perhaps uh, gain a discount or a coupon or, or some other perk, uh, you're encouraging them to create their own content and put it out on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, wherever, uh, so that people can see that, hey, you know, this brand has a lot of clients. These clients uh, speak very fondly of their experience. They, they really enjoy uh, the results they're receiving and, and look at all the content that's created all throughout the web uh, as a result of that. So user-generated content is huge. That's my number seven. Number eight, endorsements. Endorsements from influencers. Influencers don't always have to be celebrities. Influencers can be people of influence, people who for which um, their endorsement matters. Uh, maybe again, they're, they're a trophy style customer. They have a large practice. They're well known in the community. They're active uh, in your area. Uh, they have a, a large following. Uh, it could be a target uh, of your of your uh, demographic uh, targeting, where you know it could just be you want to you want influencers or endorsements from mothers if you're a pediatrician and and you want to attract more uh, new or, or or mothers or or more kids. Uh, obviously, the pediatric decision is made by the family. So if you have people in the area that have large families, healthy families, uh, happy families, uh, those types of influencers or endorsements are going to be important. Um, and then highlighting popular choices, helping people say, hey, most of our customers go with this tier. Uh, most of our customers like this, or a lot of our customers that chose this also like that. Uh, helping people along the line, showing them that, hey, based on our data, based on all the business we've done, all that social proof, we know people like you select these items uh, and they like it an awful lot. So popular choices uh, go really, really far uh, in establishing social proof. And finally, and probably my favorite and the most underutilized of all social proof, in my opinion, press, earned media. What have you done within your community to attract the attention of, of your local paper or your regional paper? Or have you appeared as an expert um, you know, commentating on some issue of the day on a morning show, an afternoon show, a lunchtime show? Uh, are you a guest on someone's podcast? Uh, have you written articles that were published on Forbes or Inc. or, or, or the paper? Are you active in your chamber? Uh, are there other people out there of influence, journalists, credible people citing your studies, uh, your efforts uh, in, in making their case for whatever story or impact they're trying to, to create? Uh, press earned media, in my opinion, far there's so much further we can go to make that uh, a real a real difference maker in your practice. So earned media, and, and if you can, uh, just an extra tip, if you could find a way to align some of your philanthropic efforts, some of your corporate social responsibility efforts, uh, some of your uh, diversity and inclusion efforts, some of your community activist act, uh, efforts, some of your church efforts, any of the, the overarching um, you know, public service type efforts that really matters, to, especially to younger consumers today, uh, where they feel like when they when they cast a vote for the company they want to do business with, they're not, they're casting a vote with their dollars. But what they're really saying is, I'm aligned with the type of business that this company represents. I'm aligned with the values uh, that this company displays. Uh, and there's no better way to exemplify that and attract a lot of action than through earned media or press. So again, go through number one, reviews and testimonials. Number two, data and numbers. Number three, awards, accreditations. Number four, real-time notifications. Number five, trophy customers. Number six, case studies. Number seven, user-generated content. Number eight, endorsements from influencers. Number nine, popular choices. And finally, 10, press and earn media. Those are my top 10 ways that you can win with proof-based marketing, social proof, and trust triggers. I'm Bill. Hope you enjoyed this one. Signing off.